Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning all about how Valheim handles updates. Sometimes the Valheim world is changed. They add a new biome, right? So how does this affect your world? By the end of the video, you'll understand exactly what happens when you explore, how the Valheim game world is created around you, and how this is affected by updates that add new biomes to places you may have already been. You need to sort of understand how Valheim works in the first place. So let's go real high up in the sky using some dev commands here to show you how the world is created. The world is huge, but this world doesn't actually exist until you start to explore it. So you can see off in the distance, you see how there's terrain over there? And then as I get closer, it starts to be populated by objects. And if you actually pay attention, you can see that there's sort of a circle. Look very closely off into the distance there. You see how there's a circle and the moment it gets close, everything gets created. You see that? So basically off in the distance, that's placeholder terrain. It doesn't really exist. But once you get close to it, then everything is created and spawned in. See? So the game is actually making things further than what you see in something called a zone. There's something called an active zone, which is basically an area around the player. But it's actually even bigger than this area that you're seeing. This circle is just the rendered zone. But basically, as you explore, everything is spawned into the world. And once you can see the area on the map here, and you've explored it, it's basically permanent. So let's say that Iron Gate were to make a planes update that totally changed the planes. And if they launch it, all of the rest of the planes in the world will change. But the planes that I already explored here will remain exactly the same for the most part. There's exceptions to this. For example, sometimes they'll add locations that can spawn, in which case a location could spawn where it didn't used to be. And sometimes they change the terrain itself. They ch here we have a perfect example of what happens when they update a biome, but you've already explored a little bit of it. Does this mislens look weird to you? I mean, this part, this is how it's supposed to look. This is totally normal. But what's up with these? Well, this is actually what the Mistlands looked like in the very, very beginning. It was basically this really densely populated forest with a bunch of these spider webs, some big, big trees, and then also some skulls and various other objects. And he here's an even deeper part of the old Mistlands. You can see all these really, really big trees, and this is actually how you used to be able to identify the Mistlands. And then if you went to the bottom, it was really flat. But the terrain seems to have updated, although you occasionally get this kind of thing, right? This web tunnel. And here's one of the old Mistlands skull rock things. But you can see now, this is actually updated, for the most part, to a modern Mistlands. However, because the area was explored a little bit, it still kept some of the old parts. So the easiest way to understand it is that when you explore the world, you finalize what you see. But what you haven't explored basically doesn't exist yet. So when they update the biome, it's going to replace that unexplored area with the new stuff because Valheim actually makes the world around you as you explore. And the recent update, Hilder's Request, won't actually change the biomes. However, it does add new locations to each biome. So this is what that looks like. This may look like an unassuming spot between the plains and the meadows, but this is actually where Hilder is going to spawn. But there's no evidence of that at all because this is on the base version of the game where Hilder hasn't been added yet. And here we are, and Hilder is right there. Even though this is actually the same spot that you saw earlier. 
I'm not on a different world. This is actually the same world, but updated. So what Valheim does essentially is sometimes Iron Gate will add locations and then the locations will sort of get put on top of stuff. So if you're lucky and most likely nothing's there because the Valheim game world is phenomenally huge. I mean, the chances of you actually having buildings in every location is impossible. That's not going to happen. So for the vast majority of people, there's never going to be an issue. But sometimes I would imagine the game might, let's say, spawn a location nearby your building or into it or on top of it and destroy it. But that's kind of like getting struck by lightning. Uh, it, I would imagine it's not that. Uh, common and Iron Gate probably has some protections, but typically this is what happens. Valheim makes updates and then they add stuff and it'll just get plopped onto your world. As you can see, this is the exact same spot. I started the video over here up on this hill, but there was no Hilda's request. This is all the same, but that one little spot right over there, instead of being a bunch of trees and those raspberry bushes, it's Hilda's request spot. So you can go over here and talk to Hilder. So let's say that you want to keep using your first Valheim world, but you think that you can't because they updated the biomes and you're stuck with the old crappy non-existent ones. Well, you can actually get the game to replace all of the biomes with the modern biomes. Basically, you have to do the surgery on the world file on the computer, but then you could put it back and play it just fine on Xbox without any mods. You only need the mod to basically do the operation. But then after the operation's done, it's just like another Valheim world. You could join it on Xbox or on PC. You wouldn't need any mods. But this upgrade world mod is a great way to respawn things, respawn entire biomes, update biomes. There's loads and loads of stuff you can do with it. I have a very short video about using this mod that shows it in action. You can check that out here. Consider checking out my video about setting up your own dedicated server. You could play any of the updates or maybe Hilda's request with your friends. Anytime there's a big update like this, it's a great chance to join Valheim, make a new server, and play it from the beginning with some of your friends. The each playthrough usually will last between one to three months. So don't bother getting anything too extensive because realistically, if you're playing with other people, they're only going to play for a certain period of time before they lose interest, even if they really like Valheim. That's just kind of how Valheim works. Valheim is one of those games that you play for a couple months and then you go play other games and then you come back to Valheim when there's an update. You know, really Valheim is the game that I love, but I still need other games to sort of give me a break from Valheim. You know what I mean? Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, then comment below and let me know what you would like a tutorial about. I love making videos in response to user requests, and a lot of these videos are actually just people asked me something at some point, and I made a video to answer the question. So comment below with your questions, and I'll make a video for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!